Thank you for joining. In the previous lesson, I explained all the general aspects of model binding, including code examples. The current lesson will focus on raw data and query strings in model binding. I will add one more raw directly in our project controller file and temporarily comment out all other controller code since we don't use it in this example. Let's rename the action method, remove the model binding and the parameter ID. Additionally, we will clear out the action method code and the route attribute. So, this endpoint should now respond to the address API Solar Systems. I will add a few simple if checks with the request query, which we have covered in previous lessons. Both if statements verify if the VS parameter is present in the query string. Let's test it in Postman. If no parameters are included, the first if check is triggered. The next check is if the parameter is provided. And the second if is also triggered. With the key value pair, the method's return statement has replied. So all tests have passed. However, this code represents an old style approach to writing such action method logic. Instead, we have a great opportunity to simplify and reduce it by simply adding a parameter to the action method. If I write a parameter here, the parameter named VS will be automatically provided to us and will be available for use within the action method logic. When a client makes an HTTP GET request to this method, they can include a query parameter named VS with an integer value in the request URL. For example, if a client makes a GET request to a URL like this, the value 55 in query string will be bound to the VS parameter and the method can then use this value in its logic. So now, instead of writing this huge piece of code, we can simplify it by just referring to the VS parameter wherever it's required. To confirm this, let's place a breakpoint and press F5. From Postman, we need to send a request to trigger the breakpoint. In Visual Studio, if we hover over the VS parameter, we will see its value is 55 the same value we have included in the query string in Postman. So, we have received the value and the parameter is accessible. Let's amend and reduce our code. So, now this code has become much cleaner and quite readable. By introducing only one parameter provided by the client making an HTTP GET request to an action method within a controller, we have significantly reduced the code quantity. I will keep the second if check with minimal amendments for your reference to signify the code quantity we had before and what we have now. Also, in case the parameter is not provided, a good approach will be to mark it as a nullable value type. Let's move further with parameters. We have two if checks, and both refer to the same parameter. I will quickly change the code. The first if check verifies if the value is less than or equal to 5 and the second if check can provide us a boolean. Then, using a comma, we can add an additional parameter and let's name it auth. Now the second if check is querying the second parameter auth, which is of boolean type. I will amend the URL in Postman and add an additional parameter auth to the query string. If we send the request, the second if check will be triggered. To see the values we received in the action method, we can again place the breakpoint. In Visual Studio, we have received both values for the VS and auth query string parameters. So, model binding has occurred for both query string parameters. Referring back to the previous lesson, I will show you the same table with the implicit binding order. Just to remind you, the query string parameters are model bound after the raw data. So, in theory, if this slide is correct and we add the raw data applicable for both parameters, then the action method parameters vs and auth will be reassigned to the values from raw data, and the values from the query string parameters will be cancelled out. Let's prove it. First, in the methods return statement, I will include both parameters vs and auth. Let's test them. And we have received the reply. Now I will amend the raw data using the same names that we were using for the query string parameters and we can make them optional. Let's amend the URL string by adding both VS and auth URL segments. 
So now we have included both URL segments VS and Auth and query string parameters VS and Auth. Based on implicit model binding, the raw data or this part of the URL should be triggered first and the other part should be skipped by Netcore. I will press send. And indeed, we receive the data from the URL. And the data from the query string is skipped. So, in essence, this is the process that I have explained in this lesson. And it's what actually happens between these two default options, raw data and query string parameters. Raw data will be mapped first if values are present in the URL. Otherwise, the query string parameters are triggered instead. And only then is the action method executed. In the next lesson, we will continue with our project planets and we will implement a design pattern named a DTO or data transfer object. We will also cover other topics related to model binding in upcoming lessons. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!